person behind Happy Puppy Truffles. Today I wanted to kind of share with you guys the story about Kate a little bit. And um, I told you guys a little about what Audrey's life was like, uh, kind of trying to think of some random things to share with you guys. I don't know if I did a good job or not. I feel like I was rambling a lot and I'll probably ramble a lot on this one too. So bear with me. <laughs> uh, Kate was born on January 14th, 2009. Next year she'll be 11 uh, and so uh, we had actually wanted her to be born on January 23rd so that her birthday would be the same as Audrey's birthday, one, two, three. But the doctor, I knew because Audrey had been born by cesarean that Kate would have to be born by cesarean and so the doctor was only doing cesareans on, on the you know, days that are the 7th, so it was either 7, 14, 21, oh, uh, so I just, we went with the 14th, so, because the 14th turns out to be the same as her father's birthday, which he's born in November 4th, and uh, then Kate is January of 14th, so they have 114 as their numbers, which is kind of cool, <laughs> and so uh, we picked, of course, when she was going to be born, when you have a sister, and, and you know you're going to do that from the beginning, that's one of the luxuries you get, unless something strange happens, so, uh, Kate's birth was a lot less adventurous than Audrey's was. We had it all planned. Uh, you know, uh, I had a beautiful meal the night before and then didn't eat anything for the whole rest of the time to get ready for it all. And there was no complications or anything. Everything went really great. So uh, it was a very quick and, and not so painful kind of process in the end, really. Um, Kate's name, like I told you guys, uh, when Audrey was born, we also had picked Kate as another name that we liked. Uh, Kate sounds easy to say in Japanese. It is more commonly though a boy's name, Kato. Um, but uh, we knew that Kate Middleton was um, around and people knew her and so the name in Japan was getting a little bit more familiar to people's ears and we thought they'd be able to figure out how to say it. We just didn't want anyone butchering their name <laughs> when they said their name. And like I mentioned with Audrey's video, we didn't choose a middle name because having a middle name in Japan makes it really hard to fill out official documents and open bank accounts and stuff. So we just stuck with a very simple name. Um, I specifically chose not to name her Catherine or uh, Katrina or something like that because I just liked the name Kate. Um, and I'd always really liked the name. I actually had really liked that name before I even really liked the name Audrey because um, I liked uh, the Taming of the Shrew, and um, and then I also liked um, uh, there was a, a song from Sting, and I think it was on the B side of Fields of Gold or no. Around that time, though, when I was in high school, it was the B side, and it was just an instrumental like piano, and it was I Miss You, Kate, was the name of the song, and I just really liked that song. So I was like, oh, Kate's a great name. So I just, I've always really liked it. And Masa didn't have any problem with it. And we didn't know any weird people whose name was Kate. So that was good. And I've always liked K with K, Kate with a K. So we picked Kate with a K. And so that was her name. And uh, we again asked Masa's dad to help us find a way of writing the kanji for her name. And he did. Um, and I think both of the girls had a little hard time because we did pick strange, not strange kanji, but just unique kanji for their names that when they started school, people didn't really know how to say their names. And actually, I forgot to mention one thing about Audrey's story. Right when she first started elementary school, there was a Canadian teen whose name was Odori. And so that kind of made it hard for her because she got made fun of a lot by that. They called her that a lot. But um, Kate, uh, you know, her, she's had a whole different thing with her name. And so that kind of made it, um, they, they both had their own problems with their names. Everybody has a problem with their name, right? Yeah. My, my maiden name was Hanks. So everybody called me Honks. Every time I walked by, they'd be like, Honk, Honk. You know, that was, you know, everybody has to have something that people make fun of for your name. So it's just part of life. But, uh, Kay was born and um, she was just the sweetest baby. I can't even like, you know, you just kind of have this feeling that like, you know, she's just so calm and sweet and you could just feel like how kind she was and um, like taking care of her when she was a baby was so easy 
and um, I'm not trying to say like Audrey was a terror, but she was a baby and we had troubles sometimes, but uh, Kate was very nice in that sense. She had a nice calmness to her and um, and as she grew up, she was just very, very kind and always looking out for people, especially her big sister who she adored uh, and, and still does. She loves her sister. She would do anything for her. Um, and she's, you know, usually you get the younger kid and they kind of have that thing where they're like, oh, I'm the baby and they're kind of spoiled. And so everybody gives everything to them, you know, but Kate's like got this character in her where she's like, even when she was really young, when you'd think she'd be the first person to say, no, I want that last cookie. If she knew that Audrey wanted it, she'd give it to her. Um, and you know, that was surprising to me because I don't know many kids who do that. <laughs> and sometimes it was sort of like, wait, no, Kate, you know, you can have it. It's yours. You don't have to share, you know. Uh, we, we've had a few times where it was sort of a problem where it's like, you know, don't, don't make Audrey let you give it away, you know, keep it. It's yours. Don't, don't give, don't be that nice. Uh, so she, uh, she has that quality to her. It's very sweet. And, uh, you know, Audrey started playing, um, guitar when she was eight. So Kate was about three at the time. And she uh, just always kind of would be in the background dancing and when she wasn't sleeping because she loved to sleep. Uh, so so you, we could tell that she kind of liked the music and wanted to be a part of things. Um, and then later on, uh, you know, she started just randomly appearing, uh, dancing and stuff. And then there was the time when they, they did the one song and, and she just picked that pool noodle up and just started screaming. And, and that was much, much later. I'm going forward in time quite a bit, but it was very strange to all of us. We're not huge heavy metal fans. It's not like we sit around all day watching that video and for her to know how that guy sings or how to do stuff or anything. But she just picked it up and just went crazy and it fit and it was weird and uh, she just has a sense about stuff, I think. And you know, there's some things where you have to learn and practice and practice and practice and then there's other things that are just natural. And Audrey has those qualities for some things and, you know, it makes her very creative and have a good sense of, of sound and a good sense of composition and a good sense in terms of visual. Uh, Kate just has a good sense of, about musicality, I guess. And uh, so that was surprising to us, but very cool. So we just let her run with it and do whatever she wanted to do with it. Um, in terms of other parts of her life, uh, aside from, you know, starting out screaming and later on we got her starting to play bass a little earlier than Audrey had. We had her start when she was six. Um, but uh, Kate did have a hard time. You know, Audrey was so excited to go to school. She, she couldn't wait. You know, I took her to school and I'm like, oh my God, it's my little baby girl and she's going to preschool and I'm going to cry. And of course I cried. And she's like, bye mom, I'm, I'm here to have fun. So she, she had so much fun. Kate hated it. We tried her, we were on vacation in America for over the summer and I thought, well, maybe she could go to a cute, you know, uh, Parks and Rec class just for fun where they get around and they, and they just roll around on a mat and stuff and, and just get a chance to meet other kids. And she was just hated it. She just cried and cried and cried and cried. And, uh, you know, you try to do that where, you know, I'm not going to be there. I'm just going to see if she can make it. Yeah, no, the teacher called and was like, nope, it's not working. <laughs> I'm like, it's like, come here and pick this kid up. So I had to go pick her up because she didn't want to be there. So she's always been a very, like, she definitely likes her family uh, a lot more than being out with other people. Um, so going to, uh, you know, kindergarten was hard. We had Audrey go, you can go to kindergarten for two years here. Um, and so Audrey did do that. Kate actually only went one year. Um, and part of it is because the place that Audrey had gone to as a kindergartner was closed because there wasn't enough kids. And so we have to drive 30 minutes to take Kate where she was going. And we didn't want to do that for two years when we knew that she didn't want to go anyway. <laughs> she wasn't ready. So both of them are born really late in the school year. The school year ends in March. So Audrey being born in December is pretty late. And then Kate being born in January is very late. So they're youngest of their class. And with Audrey, it really didn't matter most of the time. She was fine with everything. But Kate really, you could tell, she was kind of a little a little young for a lot of this stuff. So we just held her, you know, you don't have to officially send them. So we just waited and just had her go to one year. And she was always just so funny at school. She'd just do whatever she wanted to do. She was very boyish. 
She loved uh, Spider-Man and she loved Kamen Rider and all of those guys, you know. Uh, she didn't own a single girly toy at all. Everything was just all superhero stuff. And um, she also kind of liked uh, Yokai Watch at that time. So she loved Jibanya and she'd draw a mask of him every, like every single day she made a mask at preschool and brought it home. I have a huge box, I'll have to show it to you guys someday. But this huge box was full of these masks <laughs> that she colored. Um, every day, same thing. It was like, wow, you're crazy. Uh, but she'd be at school and she didn't really like want to hang and play house with the girls. And the guys would sometimes let her play, but she didn't like how noisy they were. So she'd just kind of wait until nobody was on the slide and she'd go on the slide like 8 million times. So when they were trying to put up those uh, koinobori, the big carp, uh, kind of um, kites that they put up for kids day in Japan they were doing a huge ceremony where the class was outside and they're like raising the kites into the sky and everyone's like wow this is so cool look at this and, and Kate the whole time is over playing on the playground because nobody's there she's like this is my chance no one is on the slide so I'm gonna be on the slide she like that's just what she did she's always just doing whatever she wanted to do so so that bar was very unique and fun about her um, but uh, kind of a challenge. I was always worried if she was gonna, you know, how will she do when she goes to elementary school? Uh, but one of our big worries was because the, the kindergarten that she went to was so far away, the kids that were at that school didn't go to the elementary school she went to. And I was worried at first that she'd make all these great friends and then she'd go to elementary school and she'd be sad because she didn't know anybody and all her good friends were far away, but she didn't make that many friends, so it didn't matter. <laughs> it was like, oh, it's okay, she's fine. She'll just try and see how it goes here. So uh, she had, a, you know, it was a little hard sometimes. She didn't like going to school that much and she wanted to be home. And once Audrey stopped, they were, Audrey was in sixth grade when Kate was in first grade. And so she was there to kind of look over her like a good big sister and help her out. But then from second grade, Audrey started studying at home here and that just made her so jealous. She really wanted to be here. But as year and year went by, she got stronger and stronger and she, uh, works very hard when she comes home. She studies a lot with her grandpa so that they can kind of practice the kanji and do some things. She Kate kind of needs to do it a couple times to practice before she can remember it. And so we work real hard with her to help her practice so that when she does go to school, like we don't really care about her test scores. We just want her to feel confident when she goes to school. So, you know, if she feels like stressed because she doesn't get it or because she didn't do well and everyone else did, then, you know, we need to work with her more to help her feel better. And so that's always been our focus, you know. Uh, I can't help her with the Japanese, but with math, I was there to help, you know, do whatever I can to help her. She had a really hard time understanding time. <laughs> and, and I, you know, clocks in general just flabbergasted her. And it took really a long time to get her to understand what that was. But we worked on it, and then now she's fine, you know. But for a while there was like, oh crap, there's a, there's a time question but we, we got through it, so, um, and she's doing really good in school. Uh, you know, she, she does her work, she gets good scores on the tests, um, but when it comes to standardized testing, you know, the big official tests that the school gives, you know, Audrey always did very well on those above average, but uh, Kate uh, doesn't like that kind of testing, <laughs> so <laughs> they always tell us on the paper, Kate is destined to be in a creative field. <laughs> I love that. I'm oh, like, whatever. We don't really care. We're not, we're not that, you know, um, hung up on those kinds of things. Masa, the, their father, he hates all of it. If he could have had a choice, neither of them would have gone to school at all. We just keep him at home. But we, we talked about how important it was to just be forced to go do something you don't like, to get used to getting along with people, to make friends. Uh, and the whole school part and grades and tests and all that is just sort of whatever. And we don't, you know, we don't really care about it that much, but so we just gotta laugh at it. But uh, they have a very different kind of character in the way that they do things. So, um, but Kate had her whole love of Spider-Man and Kamen Rider and all that stuff. And it made it kind of tricky because she wanted all of her clothes to be, you know, she, she would not wear, oh, she would never wear a dress, never wear a dress, never wear a skirt, never wear anything with ruffles, never wear any of those things. She wanted, you know, either a cute picture of a fluffy friend or it had to be Spider-Man. And then for a really long time, she would not, she only would wear pajamas. So we'd 
you know, she'd be at home and they'd be like, okay, we're going to go and see grandma now. It's time to change. And she'd be like, no, we're like what? You're not, you're going to wear your jammies. And yeah, that's what we did. So she wore her jammies a lot. So we had to buy new ones because they wore out very quickly because she was always wearing her jammies. But obviously now that's not a problem. She has no problem wearing normal clothes, but she still does have pretty strict rules. She's, you know, definitely more liking boyish kind of style of clothing. And, uh, you know, she's not been a big fan of glitter and pink. And, uh, you know, I hate those labels of boyish and girlish and everything. And it's frustrating because here in Japan, it's very, you know, you go to the place where they sell girls clothes and it's like, ah, it's all just so glittery and frilly. And there's no room for her to be boyish without just buying boys clothes. And, and then you always worry, what if one of the kids in her class, the boys has the same t-shirt? And then what's he gonna say? But it's starting to get a little better. And especially if you buy something that's like sporty, you know, then you don't really know, you know, it's Nike shirt and eh, boys and girls both wear that. Um, but a lot of her jackets and t-shirts and things are boyish, are from the boys section. And like her socks were from the boys section because she liked the colors better. Um, and you know, her first tennis shoes that she had at kindergarten were from the boys section because she did not want pink shoes. She wanted black shoes. And so that was the only choice was to get them from the guy's side. So. <laughs> but luckily she never cared if anyone did say anything to her at school she didn't care she she didn't hear or she didn't care he one of the two probably a little both I don't think she pays that much attention to people around her she kind of just does her own thing so Audrey would have you know heard and would have felt a little bad when she was little you know that would have made her sad if people had commented about her that way um, not because she wants to be exactly like everyone else but just because she's a normal kid you don't want people talking stuff about you uh, but Kate She's like, I don't care. So, so that's where she gets her spirit from. Seeing her be this crazy screaming person that you guys know is just a strange thing that happened. Uh, from her being this very sweet, kind, uh, you know, but definitely, you know, uh, unique minded kind of person. So uh, being able to find this and having her enjoy it and, and get better with it and all those things and to share it with people, She's been having a lot of fun with it. And so I'm really grateful that we got a chance to do all of this and to show her, you know, that practicing and working hard, just like with Audrey too, meant that she got better. So um, we're just excited for her to see what she does next. And uh, like I said, with Audrey's too, if you guys can think of anything that you, you know, would like to ask, um, you can feel free to ask it in the comments section. And I'll be uh, more than likely, more than happy to answer if I can. Uh, I do have some people ask, and I don't know if they're joking, you know, because some people are stupid and they make a joke even though they don't realize how insensitive it is. We get a lot of people commenting that she's uh, um, attention, attention deficiency disorder or that she has, that she's autistic or something, and she's not. Um, you know, she's, you know, I, I, I think people are saying that to be kind of mean, um, you know like kind of being stupid and saying, oh man, that's so gay, even though I thought we lived in the year 2019 and people know that you're not supposed to say that, but we got a lot of those comments, probably more than any comment about, you know, that Audrey was sexy or something. We get a lot more comments about that. So <laughs> where's, where's her Ritalin? Give her some medicine. She's not like that all day. She, she puts on the show for you guys and is crazy and hyper, but during the day we're all equal parts crazy and having a good time and laughing and chill, you know? And so she's not, you know, just like, like that all the time. Um, if anything, when the cameras are off, I know a lot of people are like, Oh, Audrey must be so patient to put up with her all the time. Like that actually, if anything, the tables turn when the cameras are off, Audrey's a crazy one and Kate's super quiet and chill and just kind of hanging. And, uh, yeah, so it's sort of a, a fun thing to watch them and to see what they do. And just to dispel any rumors, if anyone was wondering, she is not any of those things. Uh, not that being any of that would be a problem, but she's not. Um, and we just uh, have shown her how to keep a hold of that part of her where she can just let loose and have a fun, good time. And she's really good at sharing that with people. And I think that's a cool thing to have. So uh, we're. Masa, you know, their dad is like very, very worried about the day when growing up stamps that out of her. And so far it's still there. So we're hoping that uh, both of them get to keep that even when they're older. 
So that, and that's our purpose in life right now. We're making that our goal. The thing that we do every day is our job is to help them do this and to have fun and to grow and to challenge themselves every day and to not let go of that part that makes it fun. So uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. I feel like I rambled a lot and I apologize. <laughs> I hope you found it entertaining. If you didn't, you probably stopped listening a long time ago. So. <laughs> I'll have some more things to share with you guys in the days to come. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.